Um, just, you know, could, cannot be uh, more prouder of a group of young men and coaches. And uh, I'm, I'm first and foremost happy and thrilled for them. Then, uh, then secondly, for our fans and our administration, the people of uh, Rebel Nation that have had, uh, you know, to, to go through losing the momentum in this series. I understand that that's, that's difficult. I've lived it and I've been through it and uh, know how important it is to this state, to our university. And I think our kids uh, were very aware of that tonight. I think our coaches did a great job of going through the week and making sure that uh, whether a kid was from Tennessee or Alabama or Florida or Illinois or California, they better understand that the University of Mississippi has is, is signed them on and paying for their scholarship here. This game is important to you. And uh, I think our kids proved that tonight. And, you know, regardless of how you motivate your team, um, Every coach has to decide what is best for him and his program. Uh, I do think uh, we went about it a little different than maybe some. You know, we didn't play out of uh, uh, hatred for anyone, or, or it was more about playing out of love for one another in this university. And uh, thought that our kids proved it uh, how they cared for one another and the way they performed tonight. Raise your hand if you have a question. Coach, you uh, pretty much had your way with them in the second half different from the first half? What, what was the difference in your mind? I mean, the difference was uh, no two shank punts, no three turnovers, no kickoff return, no blown coverages. You know, the, really, I mean, that, that's, if you look at the first half, the reason they scored the points they did, we blew two coverages, we gave up a kickoff return, and we shanked two punts and gave them short fields. And, uh, you know, uh, second half, we didn't do those things. And, we ran the football more effectively in the second half and really felt like we had some things in our play action pass that we could throw any time. I, I would have been really disappointed if we couldn't have uh, thrown some play pass and that we were, it was very effective to us all night. And, you know, so I think though the big difference was just, just that. And, and, you know, the defense just decided at halftime, we challenged them and just do your job. And we did nothing special. We hardly, we didn't bring many blitzes at all. We just said, line up and do your job, and then line up and do it again, and don't give them the cheap long passes or scores. And if you're supposed to contain the quarterback, contain the quarterback. And you know, we when we do those things, we've been pretty decent. We stopped the run tonight. You know, for the most part, I don't know what they had rushing, but uh, didn't feel like that 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 they were hugely effective at, at rushing the football. But uh, you know, I just think. Uh, we're, we're so young over there that sometimes our eyes get bad and we kind of do our own thing and the good teams make you pay for that. Coach, can you talk about Moncrief's night? Could you sense that coming? Could you smell it coming? Uh, yeah. Yeah. He was all week long. All week long. And just really felt like uh, we had a good matchup with him. And, uh, you know, he had had about enough of hearing how good uh, their secondary was. and. Felt like uh, if, if given an opportunity without double coverage, he was going to win. And uh, we happened to to call some plays at the at the right time where they didn't have a safety rolled over the top of him, and and he won. Your your first two drives of the second half, really most of it on the ground, and really kind of established what you were doing going to do the second half. I mean, uh, really the, the run to set the pass right off, right, right away in the second half. Yes, you know, I, th I saw at the end of the first half uh, when we went in some tempo stuff that uh, they really didn't like that a whole lot. And uh, just made up my mind that at halftime we were going to sell out the first few possessions and go our, our tempo stuff and um, it seemed to be effective for us. So I thought that kind of set the tone for us. Hugh, if the football gods had come down in late January when you fully grasped exactly what you had inherited and offered you six and six and a blowout win over Mississippi State, would you have taken it? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, as quick as you, you know, I probably would have chuckled first. And, um, but no question, I think uh, any of us that have been, a, any people, anyone that's been around here or through the difficulty of the last few seasons, for whatever reason, again, I don't like to, to place blame, I wasn't here. And you don't know what people go through Till you walk in their shoes, but um, I know that we had some challenges, and um, and the first thing was getting them to care and, and play with great attitude and effort. But I can stand here tonight, 12 games, our kids played with attitude and effort. Now, 
uh, they gave it to us. And we didn't always finish games, and we weren't the prettiest all the time, but uh, I, I can't look at any film and question their heart and their effort and, their, and the pride that they played with. Hugh, I lost you right when the game was over there, but what, what did you do to celebrate? How did you celebrate, and did you ever consider addressing the crowd with a microphone? I would have loved to, but uh, Kyle, our SID, you know, once again, I guess, no. <laughs> he, had me, he had me standing there for 30 minutes with the TV. I don't know what was really going on with that, but uh, so I really stood there and then found my wife and tried to find my kids and, and, uh, and, and some of our players, and I tried to find the Egg Bowl, the trophy, and I couldn't find it, so finally I just came on in. <laughs> Coach, how important is it having an extra four weeks of meaningful practice for the development of your program? It, uh, it, that is uh, so invaluable. I mean, to, to be able to now not have to prepare necessarily. I don't know, you know, how, how long we'll have or any of those things. And obviously you have the holidays in there and, you know, we're not going to grind them. But, man, just to be able to go out and have another week where we just take some of our young kids. I mean, we had kids like Tamario Strong and Carlos Thompson and, you know, those guys that uh, DJ Bailey, man, I think they're going to be good players, and we can go out there and, and t cut them loose a little bit. You, the final score probably doesn't show it, but didn't you, th the, the play Sawyer made at the end of the half that saved a touchdown and forced a field goal, that was pretty big at the time, wasn't it? That's why you play every play. You play it to the whistle blows, and uh, no question that was a big play in the, in the deal. To go in tied and not down, I thought it was big. And, and for him to, you know, it was a blown coverage, but for him to hustle, stop it, and then us hold him to a field goal, I think you're exactly right. Big play. Coach, uh, Dan Mullen, as soon as the game was over, said uh, he didn't regret saying the video they got made and said that uh, the team will never lose to Ole Miss again. Did you talk to him after the game? Did you even get to meet him at midfield? Yeah, yeah, we met, and I just uh, shook his hand. Yeah, Gilbert's had a phenomenal year. People don't realize how uh, good he is. He's going to get a shot in the league somewhere in one of these three, four defenses, playing a nose guard. And uh, you know, last night at the hotel, we had our seniors. Uh, they gave them the opportunity to stand up and share a little bit about what today meant to them. And uh, his was one of the more powerful ones. And uh, even though he wasn't from around here, he, he was talked about never feeling um, the essence of family and love like he has this year. And that uh, he, he, he promised he would lay it on the line today, and he did. Hugh, as you went through this week and even the pregame, did you feel like your team was capable of this, or did they surprise you the way? Felt like it all week. I told one person that, and that was it. I won't say who that was, but I told one person, and I, I think we're better than they are. Coach, going back to the seniors, what does a win like this mean for them and, and the older guys, especially with it being on senior day? Yeah, it's so important. I mean, you know, we've, I hate to keep saying it, but, you know, those seniors, when they have to go through two or three years of hearing what they've had to hear everywhere they go, and you know how the social media is, and you know how even our own people are. You know, we'll, we'll talk about how bad it is, and, you know, and I, I, I'd like to take this opportunity just to challenge, uh, you know, all of us, man. Let's let's stick together through the thick and thin, and we're going to have some fun times together. And um, but those kids have been through some difficult times, and now they can hear the the good side of it. So you know, thrill and and to send them out and hopefully a bowl game somewhere um, will be really nice. Coach, uh, what does a win like this do as far as momentum in the state and just taking back the state? You know, I, I don't – I've been on uh, – when I was here before, we won two, I believe, and lost one. And, you know, it makes a difference with some kids. But um, I, I don't know. I mean, if, if it had been – if it made that much difference, then, you know, they probably would have gotten everybody the last few years. So, you know, it definitely is, is momentum with some kids. But to say that it's, it's the decision for a lot of them, based on the, the win or loss of this game. Some kids are wired where they want to go help a team that may not have had as much success, you know. So I, I don't know. I think it has way more to do. It may mean something tonight and tomorrow and, and next week, but by February, all this, this is probably gone in their mind, and it's more about that relationship that they have with the coaching staff and how they see themselves fitting in. And So I, I, there's no question it does give some momentum, but, you know, I, it's hard for me to say how much. 
Mike Wallace uh, was vertically as good as Moncrief, but Moncrief is, is more physical and probably uh, – I mean, he, he's, a, he's a special talent, no question. Uh, so, I mean, obviously, Mike and Shea are the two that I coached here before. Um, that, that, but I put him right in there with them, and he's still young. Coach, in the last couple of weeks, you had said that the talk of six wins in a bowl game was kind of inevitable. You really couldn't control it. In this yeah. last – last week with those seniors. Did you do anything different? Did you kind of embrace the, the nature day, of this game? Every single day. Our video staff, Chris Bushkin and Knowles, have done, did a phenomenal job of uh, presenting to those kids what this rivalry really meant. And we were very open about them. We wanted to play 60 for 60 more. And uh, so, yeah, we talked about it every, every day this week. Coach, just the, the tough losses after tough losses, they always, the guys always came out and competed. I mean, what can you just say about this bunch? I and think the way that's the thing that I'm most proud of. Uh, somebody asked me in our Monday press conference uh, what was the thing I was most proud of in year one and that disappointed me the most, and the answer was the same to both. It was that. Uh, so proud of the way they competed and bounced back after gut-wrenching losses that are tough on you as a coach and tough on the kids and, and tough mentally. Uh, here we go again. Is it going to be that way? And every single week our kids and coaches responded. And, and obviously, you, you know, you look at those and, and what a season. You know, we're happy with six and six, of course, and, but, uh, you know, we could have won a couple of those, too. But, uh, you know, that's uh, – I, I couldn't be more proud of the way they bounced back and showed resiliency and toughness. Coach, on each side of the ball, you got kind of unexpected spark. On offense, Barry Brunetti. On defense, E.J. Epperson. Yeah, I thought Barry gave us some, some really good minutes. And, uh, and E.J. is one of those seniors that I knew would play hard today. It wasn't any question in my mind that uh, how he would go out and perform. So I'm um, not surprised that either played really well. I mean, they were, they were giving us some things that they were going to have problems stopping Barry in some run game, and, and he proved to have some success. Hugh Bow had three turnovers in the first half, coming in the second half, doesn't turn the ball over, finishes 15 to 22 yeah. for 294 and five touchdowns his night. Yeah. Well, I told him I was going uh, I I to, me and him were going to, go on a little retreat next week if he turned it over again. <laughs> uh, and he, he's probably not too fond of being around me outside of football. I don't know. No. You know, it's just it's, that's been the year he's had. And uh, But, uh, again, talk about his resilience. You know, I mean, a lot of people in this game with what was on the line would have gone in the tank now. And uh, But not Bo. He just uh, – he just looks at you, I know, I know, I know, let's go, I, let's go, I know. And so, uh, you know, he, he was very resilient, ended up having a, a good night. I don't know what he ended up throwing for, but uh, like 294 or so, but good night. Coach, you talked earlier about motivating the out-of-state players and making sure they knew how important this was. Was that lacking when you first got here, you feel like, and, and what exactly did you do to explain the importance? I don't, I, again, I wasn't here, I, I can't say what was lacking, what was not. I know that that was the perception that people gave me, that uh, maybe the importance of this game wasn't uh, as important to some kids as other games. I, I don't know. I wasn't here. I just know this. I was raised here. I understand this game, and I had no way in, no way that I was going to let this week go by without making sure our kids understood it. Coach, talk about the maturation of your team from September to now. The defense has improved. Two times over. Talk about their maturation. Yeah, well, well, we're playing so many just babies over there. You know, they're just young kids, and uh, they're giving it all to us, but they've, they've made mistakes, and a lot of times they've been critical ones that hurt us. I mean, the, the, the ones we made tonight in the first half gave them points, you know, and uh, that's kind of who we've been. But certainly we've cut those down. If you look all the way back to the Texas game, and even, I mean, we've certainly gotten better, and particularly against the run. We've gotten a lot better, and i um, real proud of the way they've matured. Any other questions?